Okay, let's talk about Brexit, should we? Uh, joined by Conservative Brexiteer, former Cabinet Minister John Whittingdale, uh, Beth Rigby, our incoming political editor with us as well. Um, how do you move forward from where we are now in order to be able to get Brexit through and the stalemate, the impasse in the building behind us to be sorted out? Well, there is one way, she says, which with is a weary quite, voice. I, and we are weary too. But there is one way, which is relatively simple. The one thing that we have demonstrated is that there is a majority in Parliament for the Prime Minister's withdrawal agreement if the issue of the backstop can be solved. That was the so-called Brady Amendment, which passed with a good majority. Now, at the moment, that issue has not been resolved. And the fact that John Burke has said we can't have a vote on the same issue makes it all the more important we get a change. The Prime Minister is going to Brussels in a couple of days' time. If she can say, the only way in which I can get this through is if you give me that reassurance that the backstop is not permanent and that there is an amendment made which allows us the confidence to know we can get out at some future date, then there is still She's a majority that for that. She said that to them already. Uh, she has. But, Kay, you've been reporting on Europe for a long time, and I've been observing Europe, and we know that Europe says no, 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 and then in the middle of the night, half an hour before the deadline, they say, well, all right, then. Why you... should they? Because it's in their interests. I don't think anybody in... in it, Europe doesn't want to have this issue drag on in the same way that we don't. I mean, for instance, if it does drag on, we are faced with the prospect of having to fight European elections. Now, that, I think, is causing as much concern, if not horror, in the capitals of Europe as it is here. Um, it would disrupt the, all the arrangements they've made for the reconfiguration of the European Parliament, uh, and I don't think anybody wants to see that happen. I ju it's just interesting because uh, when the Brady Amendment was passed, uh, the EU said we're not reopening the withdrawal agreement. Theresa May then went back with Ollie Robbins and Steve Barclay and the Attorney General for weeks and weeks uh, to come back with a revised deal, at which point the EU were adamant that that was it. And it feels like that's run out of road now, but you still think genuinely that she can get more changes on the backstop when it must be only a handful of her own MPs that now believe that, surely? Well, I think we always felt that if there was to be a breakthrough, it was likely to come at the very last minute. I can remember when David Davis gave evidence to the Select Committee, I'm the Vice Chairman of it, and he said, whenever chances are we will get an agreement, but it will happen on the 28th of March at sort of quarter to midnight. Uh, and I think that may well be the case. Now, it's possible that we're not going to make that, mm. in which case, obviously, if Parliament insists that we do not leave without a deal, and I'm somebody who would prefer to leave on the 29th of March, come what may, but if that is no longer possible, then the only alternative is we move into a longer extension. But I think that carries huge political risks. I think there will be real... For the real... Prime Minister? Or well, for, for the, the party? For, 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 or for, for the country? All three. Um, the Prime Minister is the person who has repeatedly said we would leave on the 29th of March and we won't be. The Conservative Party is the party that fought an election on delivering Brexit on the 29th of March and we won't be. And in the country, I think there will be real anger that three years have passed since the general election and now we're looking at another, up to two years perhaps, whilst we still remain a member state. But, but, Mr Winter, isn't that on you if we don't leave, in that Theresa May has negotiated a deal that will see us exit the EU? And in terms of the EU's position, why should they give more concessions on the backstop when they can see that in there there's no majority to necessarily leave anyway, that actually there's a parliament that would potentially even want to revoke Article 50 or at least extend Brexit for a long time? So don't you feel a sense of personal responsibility that you should help her deliver Brexit that the Conservative Party promised? Well, the problem is, this isn't the Brexit the Conservative Party promised. The Conservative Party has said very cl clearly in our manifesto that we will be leaving the single market and the customs union. This doesn't do that. Now, for people like myself, we are faced with a horrible choice. It is between, potentially, it is between a deal which, in many ways, we feel doesn't deliver the full Brexit, but at least does mean that we leave on the 29th of March or not long thereafter, or we are into a much longer extension. Now, Parliament has said last week that it does not want a second referendum, but the longer it goes on, I fear that the people who do want to reverse Brexit will take heart and think it is still possible to do so. So is there any way that, with that in mind, that you could face 
a longer extension or even a second referendum that you would at some point come in behind her deal just to get Brexit over the line or you're absolutely immovable? No, I've, I've said that I have profound uh, concerns about the agreement, but the principal one is the backstop. Mm -hmm. At the moment, the Prime Minister is a long way off obtaining a majority for it. We saw that in the debate last week. Sure did. I think there is only the only way that enough people could be persuaded to support it is if there is a significant change. And that is what she needs to try and achieve when she goes to Brussels later this week. With that in mind, Michel Barnier is speaking in Brussels just at the moment. So with apologies, let's have a quick listen to what